What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Toman and today's analysis video is going to be about the Champions League game between FC Porto and Juventus. So Juventus lined up in a 4-4-2 formation on paper, but their formation on the ground was mostly 3-2-5, with Chiesa and Cuadrado operating as the two wingbacks and Alexandro was staying close to his centre-backs and making a back three. While Porto, on the other hand, also lined up in a 4-4-2 formation on paper, but their formation on the ground was mostly 6-3-1 without the ball. So before we start the analysis, first I would like to tell you all about my sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that allows you to create a secure connection to another network over the internet. It can actually help you to unblock websites that are not available in your area. Surfshark has been so helpful to me in the last few months. I recently traveled to Turkey and while I was in Turkey, I couldn't stream some of the shows that I normally would watch in Canada. But thanks to Surfshark, I was able to stream my favorite Canadian shows in Turkey as well. I have been using it for over a month now and I'm absolutely loving it. Surfshark were kind enough to give me a special promo code for all of my followers. You can click the link in the description and use the code NUMAN to get a discount of 83%. And with the code of NUMAN, you can also get extra 3 months for totally free. And of course, you have 30 day money back guarantee which gives you lots of time to try Surfshark for totally free. The game plans of both the teams were very clear, right from the very first minute. FC Porto had a goal advantage, so they were going to sit back and take their chances on transitions, while Juventus went on a full attacking mode. Unlike the last game, where Porto decided to press Juventus high up the ground and they created lots of issues for the Juventus defense, in this game, Porto decided to keep a mid block of 4 for 2 or 5 for one Porto did not press Juventus as high as they did in the last game, but instead they tried to make the playing area as narrow as possible by keeping a very compact 4 for 2 or more like a 5 for one formation without the ball. FC Porto's mid block of 5 for one and look how compact their formation is. There were no spaces in between the lines and thus Juventus were finding it extremely difficult to play through the lines. Here again, mid block of 4-5-1 with very narrow distance in between the lines. Because of the compact formation of FC Porto, there were no spaces in between the lines for Juventus to play through the lines. The only spaces available were either behind the Porto defense or in front of the Porto midfield. The Juventus centre backs were under no pressure and they were given time and space on the ball. So Juventus often tried to use the passing range of Leonardo Bonucci and Arthur to play long passes behind the line for their front players no pressure on the centre-backs and Leonardo Bonucci is trying to use the time and space to play a long pass behind the line for the run of Chiesa. Again, Leonardo Bonucci is trying to use the time and space on the ball to release the wing-back behind the line. But Porto's defensive organisation was really good and they were able to play the offside trap very effectively. Since Porto's defensive organisation was very good, and they were able to play the offside trap very effectively. So as the game progressed, Juventus decided to keep their front three very narrow as they tried to open the gaps on the wide areas. Juventus changed their formation to a 3-2-5 with the ball, with Cuadrado and Chiesa playing as the two wingbacks. The front three were trying to force the defense narrow with Cuadrado and Chiesa exploiting the wide areas and putting crosses inside the box. Juventus keeping a back three with the ball with Chiesa and Cuadrado playing as the two wingbacks. Cuadrado and Chiesa are operating as the two wingbacks while Alexandro was staying behind to make a back three with possession. The front three were forcing the Porto defense to get narrow and the wingbacks were attacking the wide areas. Cuadrado pulls the fullback out of his position and he opens a gap in the half space for the run of Aaron Ramsey. Alexandro was staying behind to make a back three while Cuadrado was given the license to move up and give the attacking width. And Cuadrado delivered some wonderful crosses inside the box, which should have been converted into goals. Teams are normally very happy to force their opponents to the wide areas. Playing crosses inside the box is not a very effective way of creating goal scoring chances. But when you have players like Ronaldo and Morata in the box, who are both very good in the air, you can't afford to allow your opponents to play crosses inside the box. So FC Porto needed to find a solution to stop these wide crosses from Cuadrado and Chiesa. 
the offensive line of five men was creating some issues for the Porto defense. Whenever the front three forced the defense narrow, Quadrado and Chiesa were able to find spaces on the wide areas to play crosses inside the box. And whenever the Porto fullbacks decided to step out to cover the Juventus wingbacks, they left the gaps open in the half spaces for the runs of Ramsey and Ronaldo. So in order to deal with this issue, FC Porto decided to make a back six without the ball. They changed their formation to 6-3-1 and now they had an extra man in the defense who could easily step out to cover the Juventus wingbacks. FC Porto now shifting to a back six with Corona and Otavio dropping in the defense. This way, the fullbacks were able to stay close to their center backs and cover the half spaces, while the midfielders were able to cover the wide areas and the Juventus wingbacks. Ramsey once again tries to make a run in the half space, but thanks to the back six of Porto, the fullback was now able to track the runs of Ramsey, as he had the defensive support from Otavio and Cuadrado is now forced to go back. Here again, back line of six men. Otavio was now able to cover Quadrado and the fullback can now easily focus on Ramsey. Quadrado once again forced to go back. By making a defensive line of six men, FC Porto were able to cover the wide areas and the half spaces very effectively. And they were also able to limit the Juventus crosses. FC Porto on the other hand mostly took their chances on transitions. They were very quick on transitions and with just one or two passes they were able to penetrate into Juventus defensive third. Juventus without the ball were trying to press Porto high up the ground, but their defensive line was often too low, which gave FC Porto's front players the chance to easily drop behind the Juventus midfield and receive the ball directly from their centre-backs on transitions. There was a big gap behind the midfield of Juventus whenever they moved up to press the FC Porto defence, so one of the front two of Porto often dropped in the space behind the Juventus midfield to easily receive the ball from his centre-back. Mahdi drops in the space behind the midfield to receive the ball from Pepe. And as he drops deep, he drags Bonucci out of his line and plays a one-touch pass to Corona, where Alexandro is left in a 1v2 position. Mahdi's one-touch pass to Corona, and now Porto have a 4v2 position in their favour, as both Bonucci and Cuadrado are easily taken out. It looked like that Juventus were going to qualify for the next round, especially with a man advantage. But Sergio Oliveira's wonderful free kick helped Porto to stay ahead and qualify for the quarterfinals. Overall, it was a very entertaining game of football. Both teams had chances and they gave their all until the very last second of the game. But even with a man down, Porto's defense did an amazing job of staying compact and not giving Juventus too many chances to take the game away from Porto. Thank you so much guys for watching the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe.